One of the most terrifying prospects here on Earth is that of our planet being struck by a large, massive, fast-moving asteroid or comet. Even a modest fragment of such an object can strike Earth with such a force that devastation will surround the impact site. If the strike deposits enough energy in the right location, like the Chelyabinsk event from 2013 or the Tunguska event in the depths of Siberia of 1908 could have, millions could die and many billions of dollars in property damage could occur. In this video, we're going to take a look at how Jupiter has and continues to save us from such strikes. Jupiter has a long history surprising scientists all the way back to 1610 when Galileo Galilei found the first moons beyond Earth. That discovery changed the way we see the universe. Fifth in line from the Sun, Jupiter is, by far, the largest planet in the solar system, more than twice as massive as all the other planets combined. Jupiter's familiar stripes and swirls are actually cold, windy clouds of ammonia and water, floating in an atmosphere of hydrogen and helium. Jupiter's iconic Great Red Spot is a giant storm bigger than Earth that has raged for hundreds of years. Jupiter is big, so large in fact that about 1300 Earths could comfortably fit inside it. Its incredible girth is also an incredible boon for us here on Earth. Jupiter attracts many asteroids and comets. In June 1994, comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 broke apart and collided with Jupiter. This collision led to a spectacularly successful observing campaign by professionals and amateurs alike. Although the fragments collided with Jupiter over a six-day span, they darkened the surface of Jupiter for months. Breaking apart into more than 20 fragments, the original comet was likely approximately 5 kilometers in diameter. Famously, one such asteroid which caused Chicxulub Crater snuck by and hit Earth about 65 million years ago, setting off a chain reaction that would ultimately lead to the extinction of the dinosaurs and provide mammals like us a shot at global domination. The chances are a second major impact would not be so fortuitous for us as the first was. Not only that, but if Jupiter were not there to suck up all these other asteroids and comets, life may not even have had a chance to begin on Earth at all. Planets don't just exist in space and wait for things to run into them, they deform the fabric of space-time itself in a fashion that's directly proportional to their mass. The more massive a planet, the greater the gravitational attraction it exerts on all the surrounding, infalling, and nearby masses. Earth's gravitational field, by comparison, is quite weak when we look at it next to Jupiter. If an object passes near Earth moving slowly at 10 km per second or less, our planet's gravitational field will do an excellent job of attracting it towards our world. But asteroids typically move at 17 km per second or more relative to us, while comets move in excess of 50 km per second. In other words, our gravitational field does not do a lot to help us out in the endeavor to attract objects to us gravitationally. But Jupiter has 317 times the mass of Earth. Even with its huge radius, it does an excellent job of attracting objects to it so long as those objects move at less than 50 km per second relative to it. In other words, every asteroid and most comets that pass close to Jupiter run the risk of being pulled onto a collision course with this giant world by its gravity alone. This gas giant along with Saturn likely helped stabilize the solar system. Jupiter is significant not only for its size but also for its location in our solar system, far from the Sun. Because it orbits at slightly more than 5 astronomical units, there is plenty of room in the inner part of our solar system to accommodate a range of smaller planets. If you don't have giant planets in your system, you have a very different planetary system, according to Tom Barkley of NASA's Ames Research Center. Barkley and his colleagues found that massive impacts such as the one involving the proto-Earth that's thought to be responsible for the formation of the Moon 4.5 billion years ago would happen more frequently and for longer time periods in solar systems that lack giant outer planets. Such giant impacts could result in the loss of a planet's atmosphere, potentially making the world uninhabitable, Barkley said. If you have giant planets, your last giant impact happened somewhere between 10 and 100 million years after planet formation, which is what happened on Earth. If you don't have giant planets, the last giant impact can happen hundreds of millions to billions of years in. This really is a risk to habitability. In terms of flashes and strikes, we've observed a large number in recent years on Jupiter. Amateur astronomers are responsible for spotting these impacts, including some of the most famous ones. In July 2009, a black spot the size of Earth was discovered on Jupiter by amateur astronomer Anthony Wesley. 
The conclusion was that this black spot likely resulted from an impact of an asteroid that was somewhere between 200 meters and 500 meters in size. Thousands of times the energy of the Tunguska event was released due to the impact of this object. Had it struck the United States, it could have wiped out the human population of an entire Pennsylvania-sized state. In the 2010s, observations of strikes became more frequent. A flash in June 2010 lasted only two seconds, corresponding to a mass of about 500 to 2,000 tons and a size of about 8 to 13 meters. A few months later, in August 2010, there was another impact on Jupiter, making a slightly smaller, lower magnitude flash. There have been plenty of other sightings of flashes and strikes on Jupiter, more recent ones being in March 2016, May 2018, and August 2019 with estimated sizes at somewhere between 10 to 20 meters. There have likely been others, and there will certainly be others to come, but all the data points to Jupiter being struck more frequently than any other world. If you take a trip to Arizona, one of the most spectacular places to visit is the Behringer Crater, more commonly known as Meteor Crater. This large, sharply defined hole in the ground is about 1.2 kilometers across, around 170 meters deep, and surrounded by a rim that rises almost 50 meters above the surrounding desert. Although nowadays it's well accepted that this is the scar of an ancient impact left when a lump of nickel iron about 50 meters across slammed into the desert around 50,000 years ago at several kilometers per second, it wasn't until the early 1900s that this idea was even raised by Daniel Berenger. Before this, the crater and others like it worldwide were considered artifacts of volcanic activity, and any suggestion that they could be anything else was scorned. That things could crash into the Earth and dig out these huge holes was simply unbelievable. Despite the fact that Meteor Crater is one of the best preserved craters on the surface of the Earth, and that the weight of the argument for its meteoric origin built through the 20th century, its origin was not proved beyond doubt until the early 1960s. So the study of impacts on the Earth is a remarkably young science, particularly given the strong evidence for the many impacts over geological timescales. The surface of the Moon, free from the weathering, plate movements, and oceans that rapidly erode the great majority of impact features on the Earth, shows craters upon craters, large craters, small craters, old craters, and new craters. It's now accepted that collisions can threaten life on the Earth. Current thinking suggests that an object one kilometer across would do enough damage to kill a quarter of the world's population. Such impacts are hypothesized to occur approximately once every 300,000 years. Clearly, the more often such impacts and their larger brethren happen, the harder it will be for life to become established and for it to develop and flourish. If Earth were hit by these large objects as frequently as Jupiter appears to be, we would not only see Behringer crater-sized strikes every century or more, but we would have extinction-level events thousands of times as often as we actually do. What do you think about Jupiter? Can it keep protecting us? Please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.